Irish guy. And right, so Man United have just signed Christian Eriksen. Oh, uh, doesn't that just make your lungs taste like a dog's uncooked kidney? I mean, seeing him in the Manchester United colours. Oh, doesn't that just make you feel nauseous? Like you just stuck your head out of the window of a moving plane? And for Man United, relegating yourself to signing this Danish chicken nugget. Somebody with the footballing ability of a boiled shrimp? You are a massive football company. This should be like the CEO of Google offering a big fat contract to that homeless woman who showers in puddles and who brushes her teeth with a kitten's groin. No, that's no, no, okay? Imagine, imagine if I actually thought all that. No, 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 you might be expecting me to sit here and tell you that Ericsson to Man United is an underwhelming shepherd's pie of a football transfer. No, 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 that's no. This transfer is majestic. This is incredible for everyone. Oh, Irish guy! Yeah, I know, on the face of it, shuffling an elderly Juan Mata out the door and replacing him with a similar footballer, also in his 30s, and on a free transfer. Oh yeah, and he just spent six months at Brentford. Um, it sounds like an ugly bit of business. I mean, honestly, go back a year ago, when you were bringing Cristiano Ronaldo back to the club. I mean, tell a United fan that a year later, you would be offering a contract to a midfielder at Brentford. Um, they'd feel like sticking a fork in their eye. But honestly, Ericsson is an incredible footballer. The same at Man United. Honestly, go back to last Christmas, and if you told me he was coming back to play the game, I'd have thought, okay, great, he'll probably spend about five years at Mulder. I mean, in three years, he'll be being coached by Oleg Gunnar Solskjaer, someone who we all know has the tactical ideology of a slot pubic hair. By the way, if you're new here, try to get to 150k as soon as possible. Inching ever closer, and that's down to you absolute legends. Anyway, if you're new here, slap the big fat red button, it would mean a world to me. Anyway, back into the video. But let's be real, Man United should have bought this guy 10 years ago. I asked star Ericsson to pilot for a 20 million pound Man United switch as Zenit Lodge bid. Yeah, this was July 2012. Literally, literally a decade to the day that he actually signed for the club. And lads, considering he was a 20 year old Eredivisie starless, the fact he was then being offered a move to Russia, I'm guessing this fellow was so desperate not to move to Zenit. I mean, when being driven to the airport, he'd have probably hidden a kitchen knife in his own suitcase to break down the move. I mean, remember when Tottenham sold Gareth Bale and replaced him with a bunch of expensive, overpaid turkey sandwiches? I mean, it's like a YouTuber leaving one football channel and then replacing him with a bunch of teenage scarecrows. But lads, it's easy to forget. Ericsson was actually part of that trolley of dross. He was one diamond in a gang of overrated rubbish. But lads, I'm gonna say this. Great signing for Tottenham, but um, Chelsea messed up. This guy could have been a Stamford Bridge legend. Uh, guys, this is a guy who did play three games for Chelsea under 18s, all the way back in 2007. That he was having lunch with Josie Mourinho and Didier Drogba. This man was doing a post lunchtime poo in the toilets at Stamford Bridge. And you said no. You let him slip out the door. In reality, you could have had a ready-made teenager to break out of the academy and into the first team. I mean, he'd have been 2010's answer to Mason Matt. Ozzy, if you played your cards right, in 2013, you could have had a midfield featuring the likes of Frank Lampard, Kevin De Bruyne and Christian Eriksen. What? That is mouth-watering levels of technical perfection. I mean, he also had trials at AC Milan and Barcelona age 15. But I mean, these were clubs with the likes of Ronaldinho and Lionel Messi in the first team. So, for a skinny teen from Denmark, someone who's got the body of a ferret, and would have had a face covered in violent acne, and who was probably yet to kiss a girl, and I'm guessing that would have been a bit daunting for the kids. But Chelsea would have been perfect. But lads, I am relieved to see Ericsson be given a monster massive club like Manchester United. I mean, I remember watching that Amazon Tottenham documentary where Daniel Levy was effectively begging Ericsson over a coffee to stay at the club. Honestly, it was all just a bit sad. I bit like looking at that fat old man desperately trying to stop his wife divorcing him. I mean, I'm sorry, when you spent the last 40 years eating nothing but blueberry pie and bacon for lunch, what did you expect was going to happen? The Inter Milan move was supposed to be the exciting next step in Ericsson's journey. And yet, just Google the words Inter Milan Ericsson flop. I mean, there's certainly a million search returns. I mean, his first Christmas in Italy and the Inter Milan chief Giuseppe Morata was saying he could leave. For whatever reason, Antonio Conte looked like he would sooner eat his grandmother's bed sheets than dare to pick Ericsson in his starting 11. Lads, this is a guy who spent the entirety of 2019 linked to the Real Madrid. And now, he couldn't get into a team featuring football snot like Arturo Vidal and Ashley Young and Victor Moses on the wing. But to be fair, he turned it around and they left his nightmare 2020 in a bit and begins 2021 by smacking in a 97th minute free kick winner against AC Milan in the derby. And that gives him enough confidence to get back into the team and he plays deeper in central midfield as Inter Milan win the Scudetto. Finally, things were looking up for Ericsson, right? Um, no, that summer, 
he was officially dead. I mean, for, for five minutes, but still, you tried dying for five minutes. It's not exactly a picnic in the sun. Lads, we all have been watching a Denmark v Finland game at Euro 2020. And honestly, it was one of the hardest things I've ever seen on TV. And I sat through the human centipede with my mum. And even to this day, I am so relieved that Ericsson managed to pull through. If the unthinkable had happened on that pitch, then... I don't know. I was helplessly having to watch it on the couch. I think part of us would have been scarred forever. But lads, the fact that Serie A then turned its back on Chris. I mean, the Italian leagues prevent any footballer from wearing a defibrillator. Well, that alone sort of leaves a bad taste of pig sick in my mouth. I mean, this is essentially job discrimination. I mean, Ericsson has effectively got a disability, and so he's not allowed to find work. Oh, I'm sorry, no. I'm sorry, disabilities should not affect jobs. This is the 21st century. I'm sorry, if someone takes a walk down the local farm, and then has their arm ripped off by a cow? Does that mean he's not allowed to go and then join the police? No, disability discrimination is wrong. I mean, if someone's got dyslexia in both their eyes, does that mean they can't drive a taxi? Why? Why are all Italian clubs just turning their back on him? I mean, it's a bit ironic that Pep Guardiola had a heart problem in 2016, and yet Torino were the only club to help him out. That's a clever joke! Uh, well, actually, is it that clever? I'm guessing if anyone doesn't get that joke, then uh, unlucky, you've got scrambled egg for brains. Well lads, just like when Will Smith slapped that comedian in the face, the worldwide sympathy gravitated towards Chris. But, on the other hand, from football chairman across the globe, to me, there was also a thinly veiled sense of snobbery. They're all just sneering at him, as if he was no longer a footballer, but just another Oliver Twist. Just football's answer to a pity party. I'll be honest, I think the way football turned its back on Ericsson, it was verging on disgusting. This man who had been given a clean bill of health by the doctors. Ericsson said himself that with an ICD fitted in his chest, he is the safest player on the pitch. And yet, what clubs reached out? No! You all seem to think he was a walking banana skin. That now, having a defib in his chest just made him another wacky crusty the clown. Like, he's been January training with the Ajax kids. Whoa, having to eat lunch with a bunch of teenagers who watch TikTok, eat Haribo sweets for lunch, and who squabble over whether or not it counts to lose your virginity to a couch. And then the only team would actually take a chance on him again was Brentford. To everyone else, this man was now damaged goods. And to me, it's just a bit sad. There is no doubting this man's quality. Honestly, this is a bit like if everyone just refused to ask the girl in the wheelchair to the prom. What are people so scared of? It was almost like people were treating this guy as if he'd been infected with type 2 leprosy. That what, halfway through eating breakfast in the canteen? What, that one of his hands was suddenly gonna fall off? It was all just nonsense. It was almost like those six months at Brentford were an audition for the rest of the world. But I am glad, I am glad that he's finally been given a monster club that actually reflects his ability. I mean, he's back where he belongs. That's just a year after the darkest chapter in his career and he gets the biggest transfer of his life. It's amazing. But that Manchester United aren't moving mad. I mean, I thought they already had their Dutch revolution in 2014 under Louis van Gaal, but lads, not only do they have two men on the coaching staff who both have won Eredivisie as a manager, but now, Donny van de Beek, Lissandro Martinez, Christian Eriksen, this club has Ajax DNA all over it, and they're still trying to buy Anthony and Frankie de Jong. I'm beginning to think that having Edwin van der Sar as Ajax CEO, um, clearly he's just a Man United spy. I mean, honestly, is this just the Dutch version of GoldenEye? Honestly, give it a few months, and don't be surprised if even the teenagers of Carrington start changing. I mean, out go the local stew makers Doris and Eileen, and an um, income beefy mustached women called Florcha and Ingrid. You know, the type who look like they have steroids in their coffee and who can bench press a cow. Um, honestly, Man United are going Dutch. Give it a few months and it'll be called the United Stand. I mean, I suppose Man United could do worse than copy the DNA of Ajax. Because Ajax are an amazing European powerhouse. Utter football royalty. Although, that name it does sort of sound like the beginning of a confession for a lumberjack serial killer. You know, um, Ajax teenagers in their sleep. Bit weird. Ericsson is a brilliant sign. But Ericsson Hag is gonna play a 4-3-3 system. So why can't Ericsson and Bruno Fernandes both play as parallel number eights? Absolutely pinging 40-yard passes across the pitch. I mean the media are already trying to turn these guys into midfield rivals, but lads, to me they can both share the starting eleven. I mean maybe if Frankie de Jong does arrive, but then yeah, maybe maybe one of them will go to the bench. Although even then, it would probably make more sense to pair him with Danny van der Beek. By the way though, Ericsson is an absolutely incredible freebie signing for the club. Although that, <laughs> look at this. Because Ericsson once said he would never join another English club when he was at Tottenham. Oh, this move to Man United has not gone down well with this Tottenham supporter. Yes, Ericsson. Despite what nearly happened last summer, we've actually got a Tottenham fan. Just one year later, 
burning his shirt. Christian Eriksen, the guy you nearly helped Tottenham win the Champions League, and you are burning his shirt. I'm sorry, no. For what he went through last summer, Tottenham fans should have the Eriksen shirts framed above their beds. I mean, honestly, I play five aside on a Tuesday. Um, I remember last summer, I play five aside with a Tottenham fan, and uh, he wore his Eriksen shirt to the match. I mean, shout out to Nace. But that's how Tottenham fans should react, alright? Not this weird, weird behaviour. Hey, you just know there's the same type of weird weirdo who lives in his mum's attic, spends one hour a day googling naked Eskimos, and who probably drowns hamsters in the tub. I and mean, his Twitter message was, a man of my word. I mean, who is this guy, the Joker of the Dark Knight? Ozzy, what a strange and weird little man. I mean, Christian Eriksen is already a guy who's banned for playing one of the top leagues in the world. And he was effectively told to leave the country or just get a job selling pizzas out of a van. He was inches away from retirement, and yet, he has now been offered a £150,000 a week deal at Man United. And you want him to turn that down? Out of some sort of blind loyalty to Spurs? And what? Just instead go and play in Wales for free? And so he's just supposed to live off the money he's made in his 20s for life? And so what? When he's in his mid-fifties, he'll just be forced to relocate his family to some council flat in Kent and just trying to beg the local Greggs to give him leftover sausage rolls after dark. Just, no! He was never going to turn this move down. I mean, apparently the guy wanted to continue living in London, but I'm sorry, if he had agreed to sign another contract at Brentford instead of Manchester United, and uh, purely because his wife likes shopping at Harrods, I don't think he'd ever been able to look himself in the eye. I am delighted for Ericsson. A big move to Manchester United, one of the biggest footballing clubs in the world, and a year on from potential tragedy, and after being tossed away like an empty pizza box in Milan, to me, this turnaround is just a fairy tale. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below how do you think Ericsson will do it when United. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while.